Who's going to be the breakout player for the New Jersey Devils? Is it going to be Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Yegor Sharon Govich, somebody else? And also, who do I think is going to make the opening night roster for the New Jersey Devils? As I'm going to talk more in detail as to what potentially could happen. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now. What is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer, and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So in today's episode, for the first segment of the show, I'm going to give you guys my pick as to which New Jersey Devils player is bound to have a breakout year. There's obviously a lot of players in the running for that overall title. You got Jesper Bratt. You got Yegor Sharon Govich. Maybe you could pick someone like Miles Wood, someone who was injured for about 95% of the season last year. Could he make a comeback? And we're also going to look at an article courtesy of my buddy Dan Rice. He's a friend of the show. And he also is a colleague of mine at, over at Pucks and Pitchforks. He recently released an article on the site and talked about some players that could be in contention for the opening night roster spot. Now, I touched on it on the show before. However, the thing that Dan did differently compared to me is he categorized each player in regards to what their overall situation might be going into preseason. So obviously you got some uh, players who are a lock to make the roster. You got some players who are going to be in a dogfight. And you got some players that might be on the brink of possibly being sent down to Utica, being placed on waivers, whatever the case might be. So we'll touch on that momentarily. But first, let's talk about the player that I believe is bound to have a breakout year. And I'll give you guys my reasoning. So recently I was on Hockey Twitter and I saw this overall question floating around. And they basically asked, like, which player on your team do you think is bound to have a breakout season? So Like I just said moments ago, there's a lot of players on the New Jersey Devils roster that you could choose. You can go with the safe option. You could pick Jack Hughes because he was injured for a good chunk of the year. You could select Jesper Bratt, one of the more underrated players in the NHL. You could go on the the cup and maybe select someone like Miles Wood, someone who uh, was injured for 95% of the year. Could he make a comeback by default? But the player that I am going to pick and – This was really tough because each player does have a legitimate argument as to uh, why they can be the breakout star for the New Jersey Devils. I'm going to pick Jesper Bratt for this reason, because Jesper Bratt, obviously, there were some contract disputes over the course of the offseason. He was rumored to have signed a long term deal. However, uh, I think those discussions kind of fizzled out. And obviously, we were getting close to the arbitration hearing. And at the last possible second, the New Jersey Devils were able to extend him to a one-year extension. Now, the the overall mindset that I had when that was announced was, you know, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, Jesper Bratt's just a rental. He already has one foot out the door. I don't think this was Jesper Bratt's overall thought process. I think this has to go more of what his agent was just trying to do because he was seeing some of these other players being paid big time. So, You could look at someone like Kevin Fiala. You could look at someone like Brock Besser. They were paid north of $6 million. And I think that's what Jesper Bratt's agency was just trying to do. So I think they were kind of the head case in this overall uh, contract dispute. So I think on the one hand, the New Jersey Devils were like, look, you had one good year, but we need to see a little bit more out of you before we give you that kind of money. So I think that's where the contract negotiations kind of uh, took a turn. So Uh, We got Jesper Bratt back for one more year, and you know he is going to try to make the most out of it because he wants to get paid, similar to Kevin Fiala and Brock Besser, and he wants to get a long-term deal because Jesper Bratt appeared on uh, Speak of the Devil podcast, and he said that he was committed to the New Jersey Devils organization and that he wants to finish what he started, and obviously that got a lot of people, including myself, talking, saying that I think Jesper Bratt is in for the long run in the devil's organization it's just a matter of like what's the contract like money talks as the old saying goes so uh, i think that's one of the reasons why we can see a breakout year from jesper brad because he is definitely going to have a chip on his shoulder if he didn't have one already because uh during the course of last year he put up big numbers but 
we don't really talk about Jesper Bratt being the leader in assists and points and being tied with Jack Hughes for most amount of goals on the team. We don't talk about it often. We talk a lot about Jack Hughes, but why don't we talk more about Jesper Bratt and his overall contribution to the Devils organization? Because he was able to have already somewhat of a breakout year this past season. So I feel as though he could take his game to another level. And uh, whether or not the New Jersey Devils really take a few steps forward in the Metropolitan Division, I think it's going to uh, go solely on Jesper Bratt because we've already seen the development from Nico Heischer. He was an all-star a couple years ago. We saw the development from Jack Hughes despite missing a good chunk of the season. He was still named an all-star. So I think it's now time for Jesper Bratt to do the same thing because I call our big three the baby big three for a reason because Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes are obviously uh, are two of our best talents. But I feel as though Jesper Bratt has potential to be the best player, but I'm still going to lean towards uh, Jack Hughes in this sort of circumstance. And I think everybody can agree with me in that sort of regards. But I feel as though for Jesper Bratt, he is bound to possibly have an all-star type of year because this past year he was, he could have been named an all-star. Unfortunately, he didn't win the fan vote uh, the last minute one. And unfortunately he was snubbed, but I feel as though if Jesper Bratt is able to show out and help the New Jersey Devils to a decent record, then I think you're going to get a lot more people talking. But here's the one thing that the front office has to be a little concerned about, which is if Jesper Bratt does have a breakout year, you need to get on the phone with his agent ASA now and try to negotiate a contract, you know, behind closed doors, just because uh, there's going to be a lot of other teams, because I know the guys that over at Locked On Senators were kind of teasing me about this and their fan base as well, saying that maybe the Senators could pick up Jesper Bratt if they wanted to. So I really don't want that to happen. I know it's not just going to be uh, the Senators. I know there's going to be other teams that are going to be trying to gun for Jesper Bratt because he's a more of an under the radar type of player, but he has low cost, but big value. So I feel as though that's where we stand with Jesper Bratt. And uh, even though I love my buddy, uh, the Brat Pack on Twitter, I'm not going to say that Jesper Bratt is the best player in the NHL. I will say he has potential to be the best player on the New Jersey Devils roster. And I think more people are starting to come into more focus about what Jesper Bratt could potentially do for New Jersey Devils. So he is my pick to be the breakout player for New Jersey Devils this upcoming year because I think he has a lot to prove. He has all the talent in the world. I think he could potentially become an all-star. And if he becomes an all-star, then Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, and Jesper Bratt, I will no longer call them the baby big three because in, in my eyes, their development uh, went a couple steps ahead if Jesper Bratt is also named an all-star this upcoming year or maybe sometime in the future. But overall, Jesper Bratt is going to have that chip on his shoulder to outperform everybody. And he's going to show the New Jersey Devils like, look, I deserve that long-term deal and I'm just not a one-hit pony. This wasn't a fluke year. I'm going to show you that I'm one of your better players because prior to uh, this past year, I had some expectations for Jesper Bratt, but he exceeded my expectations, and I think he exceeded a lot of other Devils fans' expectations as well. So I think that's something that uh, fans could definitely look forward to, which is uh, how far can Jesper Bratt take his development? Like, how high is his ceiling? I think it's pretty high, but we're, we're just going to have to wait and see. So that's my overall pick for the player that's going to have the breakout year for the New Jersey Devils. Now, before we talk about who's a lock to make the roster and who might be on the fringe and possibly sweating bullets, I want to bring you guys the first and only live read this morning. And it comes from our friends at Built Bar. So if you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite flavor. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they are a whopping 15 grams of protein to them. Run to Built.com, snag a box for you and your family, and guess what? Your mama is not going to keep them on the top shelf because they are actually healthy for you. So she's going to keep them on the bottom shelf so that way you can take as many as you want. So like all Bill Bars, the new Cookie Dough Chunk Puff is covered in 100% real chocolate. And they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate-covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. So good. Your family's going to want it. And the thing about Bill is that their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. 
you are going to love the cookie dough chunk puffs. Whether you need a snack on the go, a workout, get through a meeting, whatever the case might be, Built Bar has you covered. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Okay, let's look at this article courtesy of my buddy Dan Rice, and let's look at who's a lock to make the roster for the New Jersey Devils and who might be swelling bullets for them. So when looking at the players who are a lock, so Dan Rice has these players listed, and I would have to agree with them in every sort of way. He said Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Jesper Bratt, no duh, uh, Andre Pilat, Yegor Sharangovich, Dawson Mercer, Eric Halla, Dougie Hamilton, Damon Severson, Ryan Graves, Jonas Siegenthaler, John Marino, Brendan Smith, Mackenzie Blackwood, and Vitek Vanacek. So uh, out of all those players, I think Brendan Smith is the least talented out of that bunch. But obviously, we did uh, pursue after him during the offseason. So I don't see the New Jersey Devils not trying to utilize the most out of Brendan Smith. Personally, I don't know what's so special about him, but uh, hopefully he proves it to me this upcoming year. But out of all the offseason moves the New Jersey Devils made, uh, I, I would have to say that Brendan Smith was my least exciting acquisition for the New Jersey Devils. So, But that's beside the point. So uh, Dan Rice stated that 15 of the 23 spots uh, have been spoken for. So obviously there's a few others that we need to take into consideration. We need to consider like PTOs, like who can p- possibly make the roster similar to what happened to Jimmy VC during the course of Last year, I didn't predict that any PTOs would make the roster, but Jimmy VC was able to show out when it mattered most, and he was actually very vital for New Jersey Devils on special teams. And I'm surprised that nobody picked him up during the trade deadline because I thought he was a surefire uh, trade asset for New Jersey Devils, but uh, that's beside the point. So 15 of the 23 roster spots have been taken, and we're not going to include PTOs because that's obviously another factor that we consider at a later date. Now, Here's some other uh, aspects to this article by Dan Rice. So he said, roster battle royale. I I I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't play Fortnite, so uh, just putting that out there. So he said the three contenders for the royale, as in like the big battle for the seventh defensive position, you got Riley Walsh, Kevin Ball, and Simone Nemetz. Now, here's the thing. Everyone knows how big I am on Riley Walsh. I feel as though since he was teammates with Adam Fox over at Harvard University, and since Lindy Ruff was able to develop Adam Fox while he was a defensive coach for the New York Rangers, I feel as though if you give Riley Walsh a significant chance to develop alongside with Lindy Ruff, maybe, just maybe, you could get some shades of Adam Fox. Am I pushing it a little bit? Maybe, but, you know, just taking that into consideration. So everyone knows how big I I am on Riley Walsh. I, I talked about him when I was in my first few months or so over here at the Locked On Podcast Network. So I've been on the Riley Walsh train for a good while, and I really hope he proves me right. Then you got someone like Kevin Ball. I've talked highly about him. And then Simone Nemetz, I actually defended the New Jersey Devils as to why they selected him in the first place, just because we were good at the forward position. We were good at centers. It was time to get a defenseman to develop alongside with someone like Luke Hughes. And I think Simone Nemetz definitely can – uh, be an exciting prospect for New Jersey Devils if he develops more of an offensive game as well. I know he showed glimpses of it when he was playing in Europe, and he was obviously able, during the course of the playoffs, able to uh, put up some uh, decent offensive numbers. I, I haven't forgotten about that, but I'm just saying during the course of the season, I would like to see more production out of him because when when you look at his offensive totals during the course of the regular season, it, it there, there was nothing there. But obviously that's not his job. The, the kid's an athlete. And he is ready to play, not at the NHL level, in my opinion. I feel as though there's no rush to bring him up, especially since Luke Hughes is still going to be doing his sophomore year at the University of Michigan. And you want to develop him alongside with Luke Hughes. So I think you pump the brakes on Simone Nemetz. So if I had to pick, I'm going to go with Kevin Ball this time around because I think towards the end of the season, Kevin Ball was able to prove as to why he was able to uh, just be that sort of decent young prospect for New Jersey Devils on the blue line. He was able to keep offensive possessions alive. Uh, You know, if if the puck was about to go into neutral zone, it was Kevin Ball who was keeping possessions alive for New Jersey Devils. Great shot suppressor, great athlete. So I feel as though uh, Kevin Ball, if I had to pick one of those three, I'm going to go with him. I think he has the best chance of making the opening night roster. So look, looky there. We're 
16 of 23 spots. And this is where things get a little murky because we have 10 contenders for the last seven spots on the New Jersey Devils roster. And Dan Rice stated, whoever doesn't make the opening night roster could be traded, sent to Utica, or put on waivers. Now, there's a lot to consider about these next 10 players I'm going to list because you got some players who have been here for a good while. You got some players that maybe they didn't have the best season that they could have potentially had, but they were able to just show glimpses here and there. You got some players who are wildly inconsistent. You got one player, I think everyone knows who I'm hinting at, who is basically a trade pawn at this point. I don't really anticipate him to stick around much longer in the Devils organization. And then you got some young prospects, and I think everyone knows who I'm referring to, <clears throat> uh, Fabian Sutherland and Alexander Holtz, who could potentially make the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils. But I figure it's going to have to be one or the other because one is going to make that opening night roster and the other is going to have to start the season in Utica. So who's it going to be? Well, let's take a look. So the 10 players that Dan Rice has listed, you got Tomas Tatar, you got Miles Wood, Andreas Janssen, Michael McLeod, Nathan Bastian, Jesper Boquez, Alex Holtz, Nolan Foote, Fabian Zetterlin, and Tice Thompson. Okay, so some were easier than others. So I think Miles Wood is guaranteed to make the opening night roster for New Jersey Devils because I don't think the New Jersey Devils are wanting to put him on waivers. I think they willingly want to see Miles Wood uh, come back and suit up for New Jersey Devils. And quite honestly, we need someone like Miles Wood on our roster, just someone who is not afraid to get under the skin or be a toll ire towards his, his opponents. I feel as though Miles Wood is definitely that spark plug for New Jersey Devils. And are you forgetting during the 56 game uh, season, Miles Wood actually had solid production for New Jersey Devils. And I actually said, like, I think it's best uh, if Miles Wood just sat out the entirety of the season because he was just simply not ready. There was no reason to throw him into the wolves. It, it would have just been better if the New Jersey Devils just completely just said, you know what, you're not going to play for the rest of the season. You'll get your chance next year. And what, they signed him to a one-year deal, if my memory uh, serves me correct. So this is sort of another tryout year for Miles Wood to show why he should be given a longer contract, similar to Jesper Bratt, but the money thing is a little different, as we all know. So uh, Miles Wood, in my eyes, is a lock to make the roster for New Jersey Devils. Now, uh, Thomas Tatar, I think it would have to be the same situation just because Thomas Tatar led the Montreal Canadiens to scoring just a couple years ago, but people forget about that. He showed glimpses of, you know, being able to score here and there, but wildly inconsistent. I can understand the concern, but I just don't see the New Jersey Devils trading away Tomas Tatar or even placing him on waivers. I just don't think it's going to uh, happen. So Andreas Johnson, uh, he's going to make the opening night roster, but he's on borrowed time. I feel as though the New Jersey Devils will look to move him ASAP. And then for Michael McLeod, um, I try to not talk about this. I try to shy away from it. I mentioned it towards the end of July when Christy Flannery was on the show. You know, Michael McLeod, because of the Team Canada scandal that happened a few years ago, don't really want to go into detail, but uh, yeah, he's in hot water right now, which is why no one's really talking about him. And right now it's not really looking good for him, but um, if he is able to play for New Jersey Devils, I'd say he'd make the roster because I would love to see uh, him, Nathan Bastian, and Miles Wood reunite on the bottom six. So that's another player who I think is going to make the roster. So we got Thomas Tatar, Miles Wood, Andreas Johnson, Michael McLeod, and Nathan Bastian. So we got two more spots available, and we still have five potential players who can make the roster. So uh, Jesper Boquist, Alexander Holtz, Nolan Foote, Fabian Zetterlin, or Tice Thompson? Well, Let's make this a little easier. I think Nolan Foote and Tice Thompson, they start over in Utica. There's just, I don't see them making the opening night roster. Be, despite Nolan Foote being able to show what he could do at the NHL level, despite struggling in Utica, I just don't see um, Lindy Ruff or the organization just saying that, you know what, maybe he should be given a chance to play at the NHL at first. I think it's better suited for Tice Thompson and Nolan Foote to start off in Utica. So we eliminate those players. Now we got three. So, um, Jesper Boquist, Alexander Holtz, or Fabian Zetterlin. Oh, boy. So two spots left. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Jesper Boquist, Alexander Holtz, or Fabian Zetterlin? Okay. I think Jesper Boquist is going to make the opening night roster for the New Jersey Devils. 
the guy went on a complete tear when he was given a chance. And he did a huge FU tour. He proved a lot of people like me wrong because I projected that he was going to be released by the New Jersey Devils come midseason if he wasn't able to perform. But he was able to show out. So I, I would say, uh, you know, Jesper Boquist definitely deserves his respect. And I think I'm going, yeah, I'm going to pick Boquist to make the opening night roster. Obviously, guys, like I said, not considering PTOs, just going strictly on what we got right now. And now, final roster spot, Alexander Holter, Fabian Zetterlin. Why does it always come down to those two? It seems like I'm always comparing them. Why does it always have to happen like this? On one hand, Alexander Holtz was able to gain some muscle. He was working out with uh, Jesper Bratt during the course of the season. And then on the other hand, Fabian Zetterlin, when he was given a chance at the NHL, he did show out and he was able to perform compared to Alexander Holtz. So who's going to make the roster? Uh, do I have a coin or, or something like that? Um, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I actually do have a coin, actually. Okay. Heads for Alexander Holtz, tails for Fabian Zetterlin. Heads, Alexander Holtz. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not, it's not going to be that simple. So um, I'm going to have to go with um, if there was no training camp, if there was no preseason, I'm going to have to go with Fabian Zetterlin just based on what he was able to do during the course of last year and how – Yes, Alexander Holtz did gain a lot of muscle, but Damian Zetterlin already is that muscle, if that makes sense. Because the dude, like, I, I've already told you guys what he's capable of bench pressing, and Ryan Novozinski was able to help me in that regards when he tweeted that out. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Fabian Zetterlin just based on what he was able to do during the course of the season. And, um, yeah, and I want Fabian Zetterlin to also be an enforcer. So those are my players to make the opening night roster based on the article that I saw from one of my colleagues, Dan Rice, excuse me. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Um, so let me know what you guys think down below. Who do you think is a lot to make the opening night roster? Who do you think is going to be contending? And who do you think is going to be sweating bullets? So, uh, you know, go back and watch and rewatch this episode so you can hear my selections. But 23 out of 23 spots. And you know what? Uh, thank you to Dan Rice for categorizing that and making it a little easier for me to make some selections. So uh, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.